question it says that minimum falling path sum we are given n cross n array of integers called as matrix now we have to return the minimum sum of any falling path again the sum needs to be minimum of any falling path now what they mean by a falling path is that a falling path starts from any element in the first row and it chooses the element in the next row that is either directly that is either directly below or diagonally left or right so let's say if i start off with this first row i can choose any of the left down or right element for example for if we start off this first element is the first row then he could only choose the left down because the right is not even there and he cannot choose this because it is not even in the range so he just have to fall down and find the minimum path sum so you can see one of the falling paths can be like this one of the falling paths can be like this and this after trying for all the falling paths our minimum falling path is as you can see 148 which is 13 which is the sum of this falling path now in this if you just go and see minimum falling path sum is nothing but minus 90 and minus 40 now one obvious approach which comes to your mind is Aryan um, like okay we have okay if I am at a specific node let's say I have at max three possibilities either he can go left or down or right if I am at this node left down or right at this node left right my uh, left down and right so for every node you will see okay for this node also he will go left down and right although if the left is not possible then we will not go if the right is not possible we will not go but still we will have these possibilities okay for this left down and right for this left down and right right okay again it's not there so he will not go so for sure we can see that okay we will have three possibilities for every of the row so basically i'm i just know okay for every row for every element I will have three options so if I just try to plot it okay for this again I'm just taking one row in the very beginning but I will have n rows like these m rows actually in the very beginning but let's take it as one row has to understand the time complexity that how if I just try to just do a brute force then how it will actually work so for one I will have three options to go to then for other I will have again three options then for this I will have again three options then for this again three options then for this also again three options again three options again three options. so you will see okay my three is actually being multiplied at every level I have n levels because I know I have n rows so in total my time course will actually roughly be n into three -ish or n multiplied by also initial number of rows which is actually equal to m but it is less than this but yeah at max ballpark number will be near this multiplied by n which is the initial number of uh, cells in the first row now uh, which for sure is way too much according to our constraints because if you go back and see our n is actually 100 so exponential will never work so let's see that if we can figure out a pattern in this or basically something if actually we can see if something we can reduce so let's say if i take okay from 2 i can go to 5 again i can i could have also gone to 6 but yeah let's take example okay from 2 i'm going to 5 from 1 also i can come to 5 from 3 also i can come to 5 now if i ask you okay from 5 i can go to 7 from 5 i can go to 8 from 5 i can go to 9 now if you just imagine this entire stuff i have just bifurcated two levels into two different patterns which means if i just come back and see okay from 2 i could have gone to 5 and then 7 from 2 i could have gone to 5 and then 8 from 2 i could have gone to 5 and then 9 as same from from one i could have gone to five and then seven from one i could have gone to five and then nine from one i could have, i could have gone to five and then eight and the same way from three i can go to five and then seven from three i can go to five and then nine from three i can go to five and then eight so you can even see that uh, this specific part above part above part you saw okay it is exactly same exactly same okay for this part this part this part again it's exactly same right for this part this part this part again it's exactly same so we know okay uh, our upper portion is exactly same so basically if i'm coming from this path my minimum sum will be six 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 and then i just have to try on this minimum sum with this with this cell with this cell and with this cell okay and the same here will be eight 8 8 try to 7 8 and 9 and the same goes okay for this cell which is 7 7 7 and try for this cell this cell this cell so basically what i can do is i know okay my problems are actually repeating which means above pre-computed part can actually be like already be computed which is already same and then i can pre-compute this above part and can store it and use it to compute the next answer
this is what i can actually do so what i tried out okay i know that okay i can try for this value so i will just store it okay at this what is the minimum value i can store okay now the minimum value if i am saying okay store the minimum value up to at this point d of i comma j so either that value would have been coming from the cell here or the cell here or the cell here that's the only three parents which this cell i comma j can have right and i wanted to show okay what is the minimum value that could have been stored at this point so i know that okay i'm pre i know that okay i am storing the parent values also so whatsoever minimum would have been there would have been stored here whatsoever minimum would have been there up till so far let's say his parent would have, his parents would have also have been there so for sure minimum would have been stored up till that point say same for up till this point so i'll see okay dp of i comma j which is this i comma j this i comma j this i comma j it is my dp of i comma j dp is storing okay minimum path sum up till this point if i take my all possible parents now what is my all possible parents all possible parents are i minus 1 comma j minus 1 i minus 1 comma j and i minus 1 comma j plus 1 so i'll take my all possible parents all possible parents and and when i have taken all of my possible parents i know that okay okay minimum i have taken from all of my possible parents let's say here minimum is 2 1 and 3 again that is the values right now but my dp values will show okay minimum path sum up to this point up till this point and same okay i know minimum is actually one i'll add my current value which is for sure be added because i am going on to this side i comma j so for sure i comma j value will be added so i'll just simply add matrix of i comma j this will actually give me okay minimum path sum up till this point because i considered all of its possible parents which are at max 3 but bhaiya what about these cell will look for this cell there will be no j minus 1 so yeah for that you have to add a condition that okay if j minus 1 should actually be greater than or equal to 0 but but uh, are what about this cell like it's uh, also like it's right is also not there so yeah for this j plus 1 should also less than less than m so this condition you will have to add so as to make sure and again uh, you have to also add a condition that okay i minus 1 should be greater than or equal to 0 and same for i minus 1 should actually be greater than or equal to 0 so basically you will have to have a base case that okay you start from the, start from the like this cell is the base case and then you start from the first cell which is the uh, i equal to 1 so with this what we will be able to achieve we will be able to actually compute the answer for every row just once because we are just taking the parents which are already having the computed values minimum pass so until that point minimum 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 so i'll just have to propagate that and see what is minimum for my current cell i comma j and thus i can just simply do it same like let's say for this i have to compute the i comma j minimum i will get my parents okay parent is i minus 1 comma j minus 1 i minus 1 comma j i minus 1 comma j plus 1 whosoever is giving me minimum i will just get the minimum i'll add to my value will be the minimum path sum up till this i comma j so if i just write finally my answer will be okay minimum path sum up on all these points because you remember right i can start off from any of the point in the in the top row and can end at any of the point so my answer would have been stored at any of the leaf nodes so i simply check uh, my dp of n minus 1 comma j where i have to go on my j from like j from 0 to m which is i'll go on to all the columns of my last row to know what is the best or sorry minimum best which means minimum db value if i see the code it's pretty pretty simple as what we have discussed so we will need to have a 2d db array like just a matrix same replica then i'll have a base case where my first row my first row my db of zero will be initialized with the same matrix element because it's a base case i'll start on from my i equal to one why i equal to one because i know that i need to access my i minus one so i it's good to actually start from i equal to one so if you want you can actually skip this condition also i minus one because it will for sure be equal more than equal to zero because you are always starting from i equal to one right so you can also skip these conditions these conditions now coming on that uh, if you start from start off from the like x y z any row you are at you will go on to all the columns of that row because you remember right if this is the matrix this is the matrix and you are at this row you are at this row so you have to compute the answer minimum path sum to all of these cells now to compute the answer for minimum path sum for one of the cells i comma j you have to go on to all of its previous period and that can be at max three so for this specific cell i comma j 
I'll initialize my minimum value to int max and then go on to all the parents, which is i minus one comma j, which is i minus one comma j. I'll go on to i minus one comma j minus one. I'll go on to i minus one comma j minus one, which is nothing but I have to check. Okay, i minus one should actually be more than or equal to zero. And I'll also go to i minus one comma j plus one, which is the cell right here. And with this, I will be able to achieve my TP of i comma j will be the minimum value plus this again minimum value will be my parents. So I have got minimum that will be propagated here and the matrix will be the current because I am at the i comma j so that will for sure be added this value so I'll simply add that and that will be my dp of i which, which means minimum path sum up till the i comma j point and when I have tried on for all the possibilities which means for all the rows my ultimate answer will be actually at the final row but again final row it just say okay ending at this cell this cell this cell this cell I just have to know okay which cell is actually least so either I can just uh, use an STL which is minimum element uh, how we write minimum ele underscore element and have the vector dot begin vector dot end like this I can also do but if, uh, if you want to do a simple one liner for this easy understanding one so you can just go to all the elements of the last cell right all the elements of the last row so I'll go and iterate on from 0 to m and then I'll get the minimum value and that will be actually my answer now as you can see I'm going on to all these cells so it's o of n square and also uh, my space is o of n square because you remembered I like I, you can say okay it's n into m or n into m but uh, you if you remembered my cell my cell here right here so the n is matrix dot length and like it's a square matrix so it will be actually same now if you go and check back then it's o of n square and here also it's o of n square as a space can we optimize it if we go back and look like obviously we can because for any dp of i because you remember dp for d for accessing my dp of i dp of i just look at this i'm only trying to access my dp of i minus one that's it that's it that's it no other previous state of dp is required so if my dp matrix is like this i am at this specific cell i only need the previous cell all these cells which i have made are not at all using any space so i can just simply remove them so i'll use the same thing that i know one thing that for sure i don't need i don't need any of the space so i'll just simply do a very small modification and you will see the modification right here itself that here I had this dp vector a 2d matrix rather I will now make two vectors let's say vector of int called as prev dp which means okay previous state of dp and vector of int as let's say dp so this is the current state of dp which is the like this is the current row like dp and this is the previous row prev dp now when this is the case then you can simply go and iterate on all of your rows it's just that before even going on to my next row i will just assign okay prev dp should actually become my dp right so as okay like prev dp is containing my previous state now dp will be calculated here itself so i don't need all these cases which were fall short previously also ne like not needed here i will use prev dp because of dp of i minus one i'll use a prev dp here also i'll use a prev dp okay prev dp i'll use prev dp here also i'll use a prev dp p r e v dp prev dp and ultimately in this answer i use a simple dp because that is containing my answer and this is the minimum value which is used by the prev dv and that's a matrix and ultimately here itself i'll use a dp itself not a prev dp and that's gonna be my answer this is the only change you required for doing a space optimization if i look go and look back so i initialize my dp and prev dp exactly same as we discussed we will just initiate just assign my prev dp to a dp so as to iterate on dp now now um, if you go back and look then uh, you will have this assigning simple prev dp prev dp of j seven prev dp of j plus one and simply ultimately you will assign that to a dp of j and here also you'll iterate on dp of j because dp of j will actually contain the last values and that's how you simply return the answer with space optimizers o of n because you are just using o of n for prev dp and o of n for o of n for your uh, like new dp so which is o of n plus o of n which is actually o of n now your task is okay you saw that okay it is actually o of 2 into n right i can also reduce to o of n itself your task is how can you actually reduce to o of just n comment down below and yeah thank you so much for watching see you bye bye